Hello students. Welcome to this chapter 6 discussion. So chapter 6 discusses the political economy of international trade and how we look at some of the instruments uh, of uh, preventing free trade. So just as a reminder, chapter 5 addressed the various theories and benefits of free trade between countries and um, with very, the countries determining what to produce based on productivity and efficiencies. Um, free trade leads to economic gains as we saw in the examples that we worked on. The economic gains through um, uh, increased uh, domestic consumption and uh, economic growth and wealth. This chapter however, however looks at certain justifications for restricting free trade. Case in point is the opening case on sugar. The, uh, the subsidies and, and tariffs and the restrictions placed on trade um, in the uh, US market. So this started in the uh, Great Depression. The US government supported the, sh the, uh, the sugar industry with very, uh, subsidies quotas, tariffs, basically anything they could in order to um, support and strengthen their sugar industry. Um, we'll look at some of those trade instruments, trade policy instruments like tariffs and, and subsidies later on in this chapter. Um, however, those uh, tariffs and subsidies instituted in the Great Depression to support the sugar industry at that specific time have continued, which according to the American sugar producers are necessary to keep uh, the big sugar producers like Brazil and India out of the American markets. I'm just summarizing some of the interesting points in that case. Um, however, there are some people that are harmed that um, that are harmed through these tariffs and uh, subsidies that the US government uh, levies on uh, sugar. There are various candy producers and other um, users of sugar, um, those who are using sugar as an input product uh, in their production, um, they struggle because they have to pay that inflated and government supported US price for sugar. They are not e able to perhaps buy sugar at world market rates because you, the various countries can't import into the states. Um, uh, Brazil and India being some of the top producers of sugar. Uh, in 2013, this is an interesting fact, the uh, US government spent $300 million to prop up the sugar price, um, benefiting the sugar producers, but of course harming sugar consumers and other businesses that uh, use sugar as that raw material. Um, a recent study found that the restrictions benefit um, 4,700 sugar producers while imposing costs paid by um, through the economy um, consumers, uh, imposing costs of about $3 billion. So if you do the math there, 4,700 sugar producers, there's an overall cost of $3 billion because of higher prices, whatnot. Um, that works out to be about $640,000 per producer. The same re research showed that the removal of those various restrictions would add about 20,000 jobs. Definitely some sugar producers would be hurt and perhaps would go out of business, but additional jobs would be created, those who would be able to get their raw material, their sugar, at uh, lower prices, at world prices. Uh, they would benefit and perhaps there would be more jobs created in uh, those industries. So if you look at some other math, you got $3 billion um, as a cost over those 20,000 jobs that could be created. That equals about $150,000 per job that um, is being, um, as, as an example of uh, the cost of offering those trade restrictions, those barriers, um, and the government support in, um, for that industry. Basically has, there could be 20,000 jobs created um, 
and they're spending about 150000 for a job to prevent that from occurring. The uh, restrictions in uh, a few years ago, they were taken to Congress in the U.S. to see if they can do away with those uh, sugar protections. Um, the, uh, the Congress voted 54 to 45 against any reform in the sugar program. So it was a close, um, close vote, but uh, majority uh, decided to vote in favor of keeping those sugar subsidies, tariffs, quotas, whatever, um, whatever they had. So that's a really good example of some of the advantages, the pros and cons, um, how you might want to set, uh, protect an industry uh, and the various costs that come along because of that protection. So we're going to look at uh, some of these um, examples of uh, trade policies that can be used and some of the justification for using this, for using those trade policies. Where are we going? There we go. So as it says there, we look at um, political and economic justifications or reasons. We start off with a look at the various trade policy instruments like tariffs and subsidies. Then um, we go into two main co uh, cases for government restrictions. Even though the last chapter and the material up to this point has been talking about um, ha um, having a system where there is free trade, no government involvement or restrictions, this chapter looks at some cases for um, restricting trade. Uh, and we saw this um, in the last chapter as well. That's the um, what we discussed in Chapter 5. Countries will specialize, consumption will increase, economic um, health and wealth will increase as well. Um, free trade as it is defined there, it's a situation where government does not attempt to restrict what its citizens can buy from another country or what they can sell to another country. So generally there's no country that has that system, the government system in, in which there is no, um, where there is no total free trade. Some countries have more free trade, other countries have less, but the um, there's no country that has that absolute system where everything is um, can be traded without any government restriction. There's two countries at least in the world that do not even grant citizenship. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. The only way to become a citizen or to be a citizen is to be born um, by parents that are citizens in those countries. So I learned that when I was in the UAE. There's people that have been there for generations but uh, they just never um, their parents, grandparents, great-grandparents were never granted citizenship and basically uh, they've lived in that country for generations but uh, will have never and will never be able to be full citizens. Um, each country basically restricts some products or services from entering their country. Generally this is done and we'll go into this later on in the chapter. Uh, it's done to promote domestic jobs and to increase exports. Um, the case for government intervention, as I said, this is, becomes the main point of this chapter and we'll look at this later on, but uh, the free trade theorists would argue that it is to the global benefit to allow free trade and to encourage countries to produce those products in which they have greater efficiencies. We talked about absolute and comparative advantages in the last chapter. If all countries did this, then there would be no that uh, there would be more output and better use of our global resources. However, there are various motives, reasons, and political agendas to restrict free trade, um, like protecting domestic jobs, increasing exports, not to the extent of the mercantilist view, uh, but you may want to export to increase your exports and of course to protect domestic um, industries. So let's take a look at some of these 
instruments of trade policy. There are textbook identifies seven, which is why they're listed in six bullet points. This third one, import quotas and voluntary export restraints, those are very similar, but they are viewed um, as uh, two different points. So they are seven instruments um, we'll look at in more detail. Some of these you're probably very familiar with, um, but these are all policies or instruments that uh, various governments and nations use to restrict the amount of product coming in to a nation. The tariffs. This is basically a tax on imported products. There's two types of tariffs as mentioned there that add valorum or the specific tariff um, either as a percentage like um, a tax rate or just a fixed levied amount as it says there like three dollars per barrel for example. Tariffs are the oldest form of trade policy. Um, it um, Let's see. Um, as I said, they are uh, taxes on imported goods. Who benefits and who pays for the the cost or the uh, the tariff being implemented? Well, basically, the ones who are benefiting would be domestic producers um, because now their product or the imported product is more expensive because of that tariff. And we're not talking usually about a five or ten percent tariff we're talking sometimes um, hundreds a hundred percent tariff so the price is doubled or tripled um, another um, entity that gains through this tariff is of course the Canadian the government um, tax revenue on imported products goes right to their uh, right into the government pockets the uh, ones who lose out in this um, would be the the, in, in this case with the Canada, the Canadian consumers. Because if we want that imported product, we are now having to pay um, much more than, a, than that product is valued in the actual foreign country because of that tariff. And of course, a foreign importer. Uh, increased, the price is being increased, so generally there's going to be um, less sales. Um, Tariffs, basically, as I said, just as a review, uh, increase government revenues. They force consumers to pay more for certain products. Are pro-producer and anti-consumer. And they reduce the overall efficiency of the world economy. Any type of added va um, rate that's not adding value to a product is just decreasing um, efficiencies. So let's stop there and uh, we'll continue this in the uh, next video.